Hi, in this video we're going to do an example calculating the tangential and normal components of acceleration for this vector valued function and then we're going to interpret what those answers mean so we can understand what these what they're telling us and at the end we'll look at this on the computer and um, try to see what the graph looks like and visualize some of these vectors that we're working with. All right, so if we're gonna calculate the tangential and normal components of acceleration, we first of all have to choose some formulas that we would like to use to calculate them. So there's many possible formulas that you might choose. You just have to kind of choose one that is gonna work well for you. I'm gonna write over here the ones that I'm gonna choose to use. Uh, I'm going to choose to use the ones that you use the acceleration and velocity vector and some dot products and cross products. Um, those formulas allow me to reuse some calculations so that I'm doing similar calculations for one uh, of the things I'm supposed to find and then I can reuse some of those for the other thing I'm supposed to find. All right, so our textbook uses these a lot too, if you look at the examples in the text as well. So, all right, so I'm gonna use those formulas. I'm gonna do my calculations over here. And rather than trying to carry around a fraction with a bunch of calculations on the numerator and the denominator, I'm gonna calculate these things all individually and then uh, put it all together in my answer here. So I want to make sure I label my work here. Uh, all right, so the first thing I'm gonna calculate here is the velocity vector. Uh, so that's just the derivative vector. One of the things you might notice is that this vector valued function is really just in two dimensions. Uh, I just have an i and a j component, so really just in the xy plane. Um, so I don't have a k component here. I can think about that being zero. Uh, I prefer to write my vectors with brackets and commas so that I can keep track of what is in what component so that I don't grab the wrong function and put it in the wrong place. Um, so you should be able to go back and forth between the different notations at this point. That shouldn't be a stretch for you. Uh, so derivative of t uh, with respect to t is 1, and derivative of t squared will be 2t. And then I could put a comma 0 here if I want, but I don't need to. Um, at this point, I'm going to pause and come back to these formulas over here for a second and talk about one other thing. Um, anytime you're talking about anything to do with a tangent and normal vector, uh, if you're using something that is not defined in terms of s, right, velocity and acceleration are not defined in terms of arc length, they are defined in terms of time, uh, you need to ensure that you have a smooth parameterization in order to use these formulas. So these formulas over here work provided your r of t is a smooth parameterization of your curve. So at this point we can check and verify that we do have a smooth parameterization of our curve here. Remember that the conditions for smoothness are that your velocity vector is continuous. This is continuous for all values of t and never the zero vector. So this is never the zero vector because that first component is always one which is never zero. Um, so because that velocity vector is continuous and never the zero vector, that implies that this R of t is a smooth parameterization of our curve. So you don't necessarily have to write that out, but that is something you should verify before you dig in and start using some formulas. Um, all right, so I've got my velocity vector. I'm going to go ahead and calculate my acceleration vector. Um, so I get zero and two. Uh, I need a dot product of those two vectors. All right, so dot product of those two <laughs> vectors. Uh, one times zero is zero, plus two t times two will give me four t. If you wanna write some more steps out for that, you can, uh, but at this point, you shouldn't necessarily need to do that. Um, I need a cross product of those two vectors, and then the magnitude of that cross product it's been a while since we've done cross products of vectors that are in two dimensions, so I am going to write those steps out for that just to review uh, some issues related to that. So cross products are really only defined for vectors in R3, and we have vectors in R2, so you have to remember when you do that that you do need to write a k component here, um, but that's just going to be zero for both of these. Okay, so when I do this cross product, I'm gonna be multiplying by zero a lot. And so you know how to multiply by zero. You know that two t times zero is gonna be zero, but I see a lot of students mess this up. So this would be a place to make sure that you're not 
making a little silly mistake that's going to make your answers make no sense. Um, all right, so when I do this cross product in the i component, I'm going to have 2t times 0 is 0, minus 0 times 2 is 0. So in that i component, I'm just going to get 0. In the j component, I'm going to have a minus out front, and then 1 times 0 is 0, minus 0 times 0, so 0 minus 0, 0. And then in the k component, I will have 2 times uh, 2 minus 0. So Two. Um, okay, so there's all of those calculations. Uh, I do need a couple of magnitudes of vectors here, magnitude of my velocity vector and magnitude of V cross A. Uh, so I'll just do my magnitude of my velocity vector up here. Again, I'm labeling everything so that when I go back to put into these formulas, I'm putting the right thing in the right places here. Um, all right, so magnitude of my velocity vector will be the square root of 1 squared is 1 plus 2t, the quantity squared, so 4t squared. And then my magnitude of v cross a, so you can write out a bunch of steps for this if you want, square root and uh, add all the squares of these components up, or you can just think about what, what these bars mean here. That's the, abs the, not the absolute value, the magnitude of a vector, the length of a vector, it should be pretty obvious when you look at this that the length of this vector is 2. This vector is 2 units long and just in the direction of k. Uh, so the magnitude of v cross a is just 2. And again, you can write out some calculations if you want to to get there, but you can also just kind of think about what these symbols mean. Okay, so at this point I've done all my calculations to actually do what it's asked of me here, find the tangential and normal components of acceleration. So I'm going to just write those down here uh, using the formulas. And then I also want to do a little bit of interpreting those so that we're clear about what these calculations are telling us. Uh, tangential component of acceleration will be v dot a, so 4t, over the magnitude of the velocity vector, or speed. All right, so there's one of the things it asked me to calculate. And then the normal component of acceleration will be magnitude of v cross a, so 2 over magnitude of the velocity vector. Okay, so at that point I've actually done everything that it really asked me to do in this problem, but one of the things that you should start to get in the habit of doing if you're not doing it already is to think about what do these, what do these calculations tell me about the vectors that it's referencing here and about this curve. So I'm going to do, go a little bit beyond here and think about these two uh, expressions and what they tell us about what's going on. When you look at this, you might notice that this a sub n uh, will always be positive. No matter what I plug in for t, this will always be positive. It will never equal zero and it will never be negative. If you look at the definition or the definition or this formula for calculating a sub n, you'll notice that this will never be negative. This is magnitude of a vector divided by magnitude of a vector. It could be zero sometimes. Uh, in this case, this is not. Uh, and our tangential component of acceleration, uh, this is a scalar quantity, but this dot product could be positive or negative or zero. You'll notice here on our numerator, this expression here could be positive, negative, or zero, depending on what I put in for little t. So I'm going to just plug in some values for lowercase t here and do some calculations and talk about what it means in terms of the geometry. And then I'll go look at the computer and we'll look at how that looks on the computer and visualize what these calculations are telling us. All right, so when t equals negative 1, uh, our tangential component of acceleration will be negative 4 over square root of 5. And the normal component of acceleration will be 2 over square root of 5. When t equals 0, our tangential component of acceleration will be 0. And the normal component of acceleration will be 2. And when t equals 1, the tangential component of acceleration will be 4 over square root of 5. And the normal component of acceleration will be 2 over the square root of 5. Okay, so I want to focus for a moment on these values here for the tangential component of acceleration and understanding 
what this means with the fact that we have a negative tangential component of acceleration, zero for our tangential component of acceleration, and then a positive for our tangential component of acceleration. All right, so let's start here talking about the tangential component of acceleration being zero. If you recall from the definition, the tangential component of acceleration, the formula that falls out of the definition is that that is rate of change of speed rate of change of speed of the object as it's moving along the curve. So this tangential component of acceleration here being zero tells us that at that instant anyway, the object is neither speeding up nor slowing down. So it's not changing speed as it moves through uh, that point. Not changing speed. Uh, the other part here, uh, with the tangential component of acceleration being zero, that tells us that our acceleration vector is completely in the direction of n. And so if we look at our acceleration vector at that point, anyway, our acceleration vector, which has magnitude two, uh, is the normal component of acceleration is also two, that a is completely aligned with n. So a and n, are in the same direction at that point. At these other points, at t equals negative one and t equals positive one, we have a tangential component of acceleration and a normal component of acceleration, neither of which is the full magnitude of the acceleration vector. So that means our acceleration vector has some part of it that's aligned with the tangential unit tangent vector and some component of it that's aligned with the unit normal vector. Uh, and at these two points, you'll notice that a n is the same. So at t equals negative one and at t equals one, when we look at that on the graph, we should see that the acceleration vector has the same amount uh, lined up with the normal vector at these two points. These two numbers are the same. Um, here I have a negative at t equals negative one for the unit, the tangential component of acceleration and then a positive, so same size, but one negative, one positive. Again, remembering that the definition of the tangential component of acceleration, the formula that falls right out of that is about changing speed. So when the tangential component of acceleration is negative, that tells us that the object, as it moves through that point, is slowing down. Speed is decreasing. This is rate of change of speed. So it's slowing down as it moves through that point. And here where I have a positive tangential component of acceleration, the object would be speeding up or getting faster. Speed is increasing. Um, all right, so let's go over and look at the computer here. And I did have to make some settings, setting changes as we did this on the computer uh, so that I could look at this two-dimensional curve. So I'm in CalcPlot 3D here. I got rid of the default graph and I've put in uh, and a space curve, so I went here and added space curve, and I put in t, t squared, and then I had to put zero in for the z equation, since our, our vector value function is just in R2. I did change some things here on the t values. The default is negative uh, 10 to 10, so I changed that from ne to negative five to five, just so I could have a smaller graph. And then I checked these two boxes here at the bottom, restrict view to two dimensions, since we're just looking at a two-dimensional curve, and re, uh, use constant primary color. If you uncheck that, you get a colored curve, which is fine. It's just hard to look at when you have a bunch of vectors on there. Um, and then uh, the other thing that I did here, I'm going to go to curve settings. I unchecked all of the default settings, but I'm going to recheck a few of them here. What I want to focus on here is the acceleration vector and how that is lined up with the unit tangent and unit normal vectors. So at the very least, I wanna check those three things. I'm also gonna check show trace point and trace vector so that we can see where the object's at at a particular T value. Um, but at the very least, you wanna see acceleration, unit tangent, and unit normal vectors. Okay, and then here I'm just gonna use this uh, little button to drag along the curve. So it starts out at t equals negative five or up off the screen there. Uh, and you can see as I move my t increasing, uh, as I increase t, we're going in the direction of the orientation of the curve. And you can see these vectors here. Uh, let me move this to t equals negative one. 
just typed that instead of trying to drag it there. And so you can see our trace point, that's the point at the terminal point of the vector. This blue vector where my cursor is, is r of zero. So that's the position vector at t equals zero. And then these other three vectors are not labeled, but you should be able to figure out which ones they are. So the unit tangent vector is going to be tangent to the curve in the direction of the orientation and one unit long. So that's this purple vector. Unit normal vector will be on the concave side of the curve, one unit long and perpendicular to the unit tangent vector. So that's this one. So that means our acceleration vector must be this green one. So at t equals negative one, you can see that uh, my acceleration vector is lined up somewhat with the unit normal vector. It is also uh, lined up with the unit tangent vector, but in the direction opposite of that unit tangent vector. So that's why I got a negative uh, tangential component of acceleration, that scalar that I would multiply that unit tangent vector by to form a sum of something along the tangent vector and something times the normal vector. That scalar would be negative because I would need to turn around that vector in order to form a sum for my acceleration vector here. So at this point, I've got a negative tangential component of acceleration. The object is slowing down. Uh, if we look at that velocity vector, we'd be able to see that. Or And let's see, I don't know if it'll show speed. Um, but uh, if I go here to t equals 0, there we are at t equals 0. So uh, the position vector is just right here at the origin, but you can still see the tangent and normal vectors here. So one unit long in the direction of the positive x-axis and one unit long in the direction of the positive y-axis. Axis. This green vector is my acceleration vector, so its tail is on the curve. Notice that acceleration vector is completely in the direction of the n. Remember, at t equals zero, we got that the a sub t was zero, so the acceleration vector is not lined up at all with the unit tangent vector. And then if we go to t equals one, uh, we can see that that acceleration vector, notice that it has the same amount in the direction of the normal vector as we had at t equals negative 1. We expected that from our calculations. And then the unit tangent vector, the acceleration vector is also lined up somewhat with the unit tangent vector. That forms an acute angle, so we'd have a positive scalar that we would multiply that unit tangent vector by if I wanted to form a sum of some vector, time, uh, some vector along the unit tangent vector plus a vector along the unit normal vector that would give me that acceleration vector. All right, so when you do homework problems, even if it doesn't ask you to look at the graph or interpret from the graph, this is a really good idea uh, to just to make sure that you're making sense of those answers that you get. I will often ask on a test not only to do the calculations, but then to interpret those answers. Um, because it's important if you're going to calculate these things that you also know what they mean. So even if the textbook doesn't ask you or the online homework doesn't ask you to interpret them, this sort of looking at what's happening on the graph, plugging in some different values for t, uh, any of those things are a good thing to help you with the concepts.